Hello, hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I am going to try to type a comment. It is almost five o'clock, so come on in, come on in. Uh, I am going to try to type a comment. It is almost five o'clock, so come on in, come on in. Uh, I am going to try to type a comment. Invite your friends, invite your relatives, invite your colleagues who've been talking to you about potentially buying a house in 2020 or next year so that we can get them prepared for the market and how they can start building wealth through real estate. All right. So invite them on in, invite them on in. Welcome, welcome. So I am broadcasting from a couple of different, in a couple of different um, pages as well as YouTube. So if you're joining us on YouTube, welcome, welcome. Um, I'll be live there. It gets uploaded after the Facebook Live. And if you are with us on Facebook in our Porter Premier Homes Facebook page, welcome. And if you're in our private group, on again, welcome to Wealth and Wines, a real estate experience. And today is Wednesday. It is 5.01. I hope you have something in your glass. We have had a long, uh, over 24 hours here in the great United States of America as we have been involved in our elections. So let's uh, all enjoy the time we still have until we get the official announcement about who our next president will be. So come on in, invite your friends, invite your family members. Feel free to share this live. We're going to be talking today about competing against a cash buyer. <clears throat> but before we do that, you know, we have our featured wine. I have to hold it up a little bit. Our featured wine today. And we're going to talk about that as well. So come on in. Come on in. I'm going to switch to a different page so that I can see the comments. Please do. If you would give StreamYard permission to access your account so that when you do make comments, I can see who's speaking. Okay. So you see my comment that I made and it is showing up on the screen. And if you do the same thing, I'll be able to respond to you directly. So please do uh, give StreamYard permission to access your account so I can respond directly to your comments. So it's a little bit after three. I'm going to go ahead and start. If you are watching us on the replay, please drop hashtag replay when you do get a chance to see this video. And right now I'm going to say welcome again. Today is Wednesday, November the 4th. We are excited to be in a new month. I'm excited to be in a new month. It's been a whirlwind uh, year for all of us. And I am just thankful that today I am still in good health. I am praying for those of you who are not, those of you who are caring for family members, those of you who are teaching your children, those who are helping other folks out who have children while they are working. We are just all, I think, working together to move us forward in 2020. So I am hoping that what I can bring to you today will also be helpful for you or somebody that you can share this with who is in the market to purchase a home. So today we are going to be focusing 
on home buyers. And you know that we are in a seller's market. I've told you that in the previous Facebook Live. So right now, I'm just going to stop and introduce myself. My name is Gersha Porter. I eliminate confusion for buyers by giving them key strategies to unlock resources to buy their dream home. I also work with sellers to position themselves to be the strategic, amazing home that the buyers from today want to offer multiple, multiple offers on. So if you are looking to find a dream home, you can search on our website, porterpremierhomes.com. You can use my HomeSnap app. I'm going to make sure I drop that link in the comments so that you can use an app to search as well. You can also access me through any of the social media channels you might be seeing this replay or contact me directly on my phone. So welcome, welcome again. What I'd love to do, thank you. I have a Facebook viewer who just said tribe. Welcome, welcome. And as I mentioned, please do share this video out. Text your friends, let them know how they might be able to compete in today's market. So we're going to be talking about competing against cash buyers. So a cash buyer is bidding against you for a home, but you're really not out. Today, we're going to dive into how you can win. And before we do that, you know, we have to talk about our feature wine of the day. Okay. So our feature wine for the day is uh, Pinot Gris. This is a 2019 Deloche Vineyard. I'll bring it a little bit closer, but you have the image on the screen. And that is actually what I have in my glass. So some of you have probably been drinking wine since yesterday. We had some late nights. We got up early this morning and we've been watching the news as we have been keeping tabs on what's going on in our world politically. But this particular wine is produced in Sonoma County in California. It pairs well with rich seafood dishes like lobster and scallops, which are pretty popular here in the Baltimore, Maryland area. If you were to um, have some of this with light cheeses, and it's amazing with some Caesar salads. And in terms of sauces, pasta with white sauce. This bottle is actually retails for $32. And if you are a member of our wine society, your price is $25.60. So you can find my website, winesandwealth.com's um, dot com on um, the link in my um, link tree if you're on Instagram. And you can actually go to the website at your convenience. And I just want to let you know, too, we will be hosting myself and a couple of my business partners a virtual wine tasting. Um, two of them in November, where you'll have the chance to purchase full bottles of wine, invite a friend or two over, and learn more about those particular wines while you taste them. And then you can finish them up when we're finished the tasting. So I'm going to drop the link to that. It is on Eventbrite, and we're calling it Friendsgiving as we enter into this season of Thanksgiving. So look out for that if you are interested in just meeting new people, learning more about wine, and tasting some that you may not have tasted before. And I've told you guys, I am a red girl, but as I continue to get exposed to other types of wine, sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. But what I now know is when I go out or if I'm at someone else's home, I don't know what I'm comfortable tasting. So cheers. So let us dive in. We're going to talk about competing against a cash buyer. So I'm going to give you guys three points today and then I'm going to kind of do a little side conversation about another. So the first thing you want to do is Let's just, I want to just put a scenario out there for you. You're out there, you're looking for that dream home. You finally found it, the home of your dream. You're ready to make an offer. You're excited. And then, bam, you get notification that there's been another offer. And if you work with me, I always call the listing agent before we prepare our offer because I want to know 
Are there any offers? And in today's market, typically the answer is yes. I then say, how many do you have? because we want to know how many other buyers we're competing against. So we find out, yep, there's another offer. And the agent says, it's all cash. So what are the odds of that? The house that you want, somebody else is about to make an offer or they made an offer and it is a cash offer. So who the heck has that kind of money? And I've had people ask me that before. So we're here in Maryland. We oftentimes will get buyers who have relocated from let's say the New York area and they sold their home and they have cash because as you know, the real estate in New York is much more uh, expensive than it is here. So they can sell a town home and come to our area and buy a house cash for five, $600,000. So you say, who's going to buy cash? There are folks that buy cash. There are also buyers here in the Maryland area. They sell their home they move into temporary housing, an apartment or a townhouse for a short term, and they have their money. So they're a much stronger buyer because they have cash, right? So you might be reaching for the tissues as you see your dream home just kind of crumble into dust around you. But just hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm here to tell you that you too might not be down you're not out, okay? So you may be a little down about it, but you're not out. So let me explain. The first thing we're gonna talk about is about making a stronger offer. So that particular step, what does that mean? Well, how could you make a stronger offer than a cash buyer? Well, what you're gonna do is understand, and you already know this, that money talks right? So you're going to have to find another way to get your foot in the door. Just because it's a cash buyer does not mean that they have offered the seller the list price. And the list price is the advertised price, okay? So it doesn't mean that at all. So there's several ways that you can get your foot in the door. First, you can offer more money than the asking price or than that list price, okay? The only thing that speaks louder than cash is more cash because the bottom line is when that seller sells that house, they're getting all the money. It's just coming from a mortgage lender. Okay. Second, you can write an offer that they be demanding less, showing the seller that you are much easier to work with for the long run. So usually you're gonna be on a contract for about 30 days. And the seller wants to know, we're gonna have a very smooth transaction. And so does the agent. They wanna know it's gonna be a pretty smooth transaction. So when you are initially making that offer, it's not just about the asking price. It's about the home inspection. It's about your financing contingency. It's about the lender that when the agent picks up the phone and calls them to figure out how solid you are as a buyer, that that lender answers their phone or that they call back pretty quickly or that they text back, I'll call you back in five minutes. That means to that seller's agent that, wow, we're going to probably have a pretty smooth transaction because the folks that are on this team, which is the agent for the buyer, the lender for the buyer, the title company, they're all looking forward to getting to the finish line. And that is to be able to get the buyers those keys and allowing the seller to sell their home. So showing the seller that you are a much easier buyer from the beginning is going to be really, really important. So make a strong offer. Your home inspection, it should be quick, um, very quick. When I am writing offers today, those inspections happen in seven days. And it's not just that the inspection happens in seven days. It's that if you're going to request any repairs from the seller, that you have to turn that list over in that seven day period. So you're having your inspection in the first one or two days. You're having that radon inspection because you, re you remember the radon little machine has to stay in the house for 48 hours. So that's two days of your seven. So you're going to make a strong offer. You're going to show them that money talks. You're going to offer more. You're going to show them that you're going to do your inspections in a short amount of time. And it doesn't matter what price point the house is in that you're buying, whether it's a $100,000 home or a $500,000 home, you may still be asking the seller for closing costs. 
And if you're asking them for closing costs, help, or what we officially call a seller contribution, you want to consider that. That money comes out of the seller's pocket. And so when you're offering them their asking price and then you say, yeah, and by the way, I'd like you to help me with my closing costs. So can you please give me $5,000 back? That $5,000 is coming out of the seller's pocket. So you want to make sure that your strong offer is going to net them as much as possible. Because as I said in the beginning, money talks. And that is the environment that we're in here in our market. Sellers want as much money as they can get. And that is the spreadsheet that the agent that works for the seller is going to be putting together. Which offer is going to net the seller the most that they can have? Okay, so want to make a strong offer. That's number one. Number two, you want to pay extra. Well, you say, well, what does that mean, pay extra? Well, paying extra could involve some of the seller's expenses. What does that mean? Well, in a real estate transaction, and this is something that some agents aren't aware of to include in their offers. And I've had to do it with some of my clients. Instead of just paying a higher purchase price or asking price or list price, you may want to see, well, what other expenses does the seller have? Well, in the state of Maryland, all sellers and buyers pay transfer and recordation charges or taxes. And they're typically split between the buyer and the seller. Everybody pays the same amount. Well, one of the strategies is pay the seller's transfer and recordation. I've received offers very recently that had those, and you could believe that the seller was very excited to see that. Because what it means now is that because the seller isn't paying those transfer and recordation charges, they're actually making more money on their home because that's an expense they no longer have to pay, okay? So that's how you can pay extra, not just the asking price, not just the purchase price, but where else can you pay extra, okay? And the part of the strategy with that may mean that you need to look at homes that are below the threshold in your budget so that you can have some wiggle room to throw some more money at some other things, okay? So number two is to pay extra. Any questions, any comments? I'm looking over here at StreamYard. Let me know, I'm gonna take a quick second and see if there are any comments um, that you have that I might be able to find and respond to right away all right okay if i don't see them now i will absolutely hop back on and make um answer your questions or make some comments after the live all righty so that was number two about paying extra number three and this is really about mindset right now we have lots and lots going on in the world and you're looking for a house, okay? So never give up. There is no doubt that cash buyers have a lot of power, and they do, and no one of the ways that they can wield their powers is by actually, you know, they skip the bank, and you have to use the bank. So sidestepping a ton of escrow procedures and making a lot of demands, but they know that they can usually also back out of a deal because they feel they have a lot of power. So if these demands go unmet that they make or the cash deal falls through, and I know a client who uh, three days before their settlement, there was an issue with the house and the cash buyer backed out. The seller then made the repairs and she had to put it back on the market. So cash buyers do have a level of confidence that sometimes allows them to push the seller a little bit harder than buyers who are using financing. So never give up because you may lose that home to a cash buyer initially, 
but don't be surprised if you get a call from the seller a few weeks later, the seller's agent to let you know that that house is back on the market. And I am working with clients now. We see that if you happen to be looking online at real estate and you see comments like back on the market, um, buyer financing fell through, those are properties that went under contract or went on under contract, the seller accepted a contract. And then something happened with the transaction. And when it did, the transaction that was currently in place was terminated and the house went back on the market. And I've had a number of buyers, including myself, that have purchased homes that were previously under contract, the deal fell apart and it went back on and it went back on for you. So never give up. So when you're up against competition, a tough competition in the market that we're working in right now, it's imperative that you have a great real estate agent who can get your offers notice. And I know how to navigate those situations with ease because I have come across them and this is the second hot market I've been a part of. So because I've been in this business for 17 years, and when I initially started, we were in a hot um, hot market and that hot market meant multiple offers for sellers and we're in it again. So I do have that experience to help you get your offer noticed and accepted. So at this point, you may be convinced that you may need some guidance around the area of going against a cash buyer with a non-cash offer. But you may also be thinking that you have no idea where to start. So if you're thinking about making a move, I can help you through that process. Just send me a message or text me at 443-744-0206. For those of you who are just joining, I want to just let you know my name again is Kersha Porter. I am an agent to help eliminate confusion for buyers by giving them key strategies to unlock resources to buy their dream home. There is no pressure, no sales tactic. I'm here just to help and guide you through the process of owning a home and beginning to build wealth. So I will drop in the comments my Calendly link if you'd like to set up a house call where we get together to talk about the strategy that you may want to put together to purchase your home this year or next year. It is not too soon. And I see, Josephine, you have a question below the threshold. And what I meant by that is when I work with buyers, one of the first things we do is we get pre-approved for a mortgage. And when you're pre-approved for a mortgage, let's say it's $300,000, that is the threshold. That is the maximum amount of money that you were approved for. But you may say, I'd like to look at 250 houses because what that's going to do is give you the ability to offer more than the list price of 250 because you are not at the threshold or you're not at the max of your pre-approved amount that you're able to borrow. So that could be the strategy for some buyers who want to make sure that if they need assistance, um, with closing costs so that they may search for homes that are below their maximum purchasing power. So that was a really good question. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll drop a link if you're interested. Um, if you are living here in the Baltimore metropolitan area, Baltimore City, Baltimore County, Howard County, Prince George's County, Harford County, I want to let you know that I am able to help you get into the home of your dream. So feel free to post any questions, comments, concerns in the chat, in the comment, um, depending on where you're finding this particular video. And I would be very happy to respond to you. If you're looking for homes, search our website, porterpremierhomes.com. And you will get a great sense of the properties that are on the market today, what they are selling for in the particular area. I want to remind you that I'm here every Wednesday at five o'clock 
bring your glass of wine as you continue to hopefully learn more about wines as I present them to you. And if you know anyone who feels that their credit score is probably below um, what most of the lenders are accepting today, reach out to me. Click on that link for 1000 Black Families Initiative. We are helping home buyers whose credit scores are not um, at the level where it needs to be right now for most lenders. We're going to give them some home buyer counseling. We're going to get them ready to buy. And the lenders that we've partnered in, partnered with, have agreed to give those buyers 1% back at closing. A lot of different benefits. So if you think by any stretch that you know somebody who this may work well for or it's for you, please do reach out to me and we can discuss this in more detail. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button for uh, my Facebook page. It's porterpremier.com. If you are viewing this on YouTube, please subscribe and share that with your friends and family members. All righty. Well, thank you again. I do appreciate you joining me for our weekly Wealth and Wines of Real Estate Experience. And if I could provide any more information for you, please do let me know. I'm going to finish up this bottle. I did start it last night. And as some of us wait to hear the final decision from our election on a national level, have a great evening. Take care. Thank you again for joining. Good night.